Today we are going to teach you how to make this steak, the king of steaks, the ribeye cap, in just three easy steps. Hi, I'm Al from Eat More Vegans. And I'm Leah from Eat More Vegans. Welcome back to our fans and subscribers. If you're new here and you're a meat eater and you like high quality meat from animals that were raised on vegetarian or vegan diets, you're in the right place. Smash that subscribe button. And click the bell to be notified whenever we post a video. Great, so today we are going to cook and eat a vegan, but not a vegan person, right? What kind of vegan are we gonna cook and eat today? today we are going to cook a cow. That's right, we're gonna cook vegan cow. As a matter of fact, we are going to cook and eat and show you how to cook and eat the king of steaks. So this is a ribeye cap steak. They call this the king of steaks because this is the most delicious, most tender, and most well-marbled part of the cow. Now you've all had ribeye steaks before and you know that there's two muscles in the ribeye steak. There's the eye, that big round piece, and then around the edge is the ribeye cap. And that's always the most delicious fatty piece. And so what Snake River Farms did, actually at the suggestion of Thomas Keller, if you've watched his masterclass, is they actually sell the two pieces of meat, the two muscles separately. So you buy the ribeye as an eye, and you can buy the ribeye cap. And this is a 10 ounce, is actually a pair of 10 ounce American Wagyu gold ribeye caps from Snake River Farms. So they actually take and separate the cap, they cut it into about a three finger tall piece, they roll it up and then tie it with butcher's twine. And then we're gonna cook this just like you'd cook a filet mignon, but we're gonna get a better steak than a filet mignon. Can you imagine a better steak than a filet mignon? Nope. So Leah's never had this before. It's gonna be her first time. So if you've watched our steak videos before, you know it. If you haven't, by the way, it's a playlist right here. But if you watch our steak videos, you know we like to put some salt on in advance get a little dry brine. Today we're gonna do a quick dry brine. We're only gonna do a couple of hours and get these into the fridge. So Leah, do you wanna salt them today? I would love to. All right, you're on. Here we go. All right, so we're gonna get a good coat of salt all over the top of both. Notice how she's keeping her hand way up above. Lots of salt, lots and lots of salt. There you go. Do more sprinkles? Yep, all over. We want a good coat of salt on there. All right, let's turn these over and do the other side. They look different. Yeah, sometimes they probably came from two different cows. So while she's doing that, if you've never tried, that one's perfect, now do the other one. If you've never tried American Wagyu steak, there are a number of producers, number of places to get it. I like to get my American Wagyu from Snake River Farms. All right, let's do the sides. Years ago, they brought over Japanese red Wagyu cattle, which were 100% purebred Japanese, and they crossbred them with certified Angus beef, there you go, oh, to wow. create the combination of that really nice marbling. Good job, all right, here we go. And so if you were raised on Angus beef here in the US and you like that big beefy taste, you get that with this steak. Perfect, that one's great. If you ever tried Japanese uh, Wagyu beef, you know that the marbling is really intense. Some people don't actually like Japanese Wagyu beef. Some people think that that texture is too much for them. It's too rich for them. This is a really nice balance between heavy marbling and all the flavor you're gonna get from the marbling and the certified Angus beef. Now you've had American Wagyu before, right? So we've done that on the show and we think it's the most delicious. So encourage you to try this. I'm gonna warn you in advance, the American Wagyu, this is as good of a rib ribeye cap as you can get. These pair of 10 ounce sells for about $180 on Snake River Farms. They do have a lot of coupons often. Make sure you check the description below. If there's a sale going on, I'll make sure that I update the description so that you can have the coupon code and the link to get these in the description below. So we're gonna put these in the fridge. We'll be back in a few hours and we'll season them and we'll get them on the grill. So the steaks have been in the refrigerator with the salt for about three hours. Uh, not the overnight dry brine that we did in the New York uh, strip experiment. If you haven't seen that, uh, 
follow the link that's right up there, but a couple hours, pull a little bit of the moisture out, let some of the salt get into the meat. It's a little harder, right, Leah? Can you feel that? Yeah, feel a little way, bit harder, right? Harder. So we pulled out, pulled out a good amount of moisture, which is what we want when we're grilling. And now we're gonna season, get them on the grill. Leah, what do we use as our binder when we're doing steak? We use tallow, which we is use, made out of fat. Right, we make this from the fat, but this is the healthiest part of the fat. And Leah's just gonna melt it in her hand there. It's already like almost gone. Okay, and then go ahead and do one of the steaks. Go ahead and cover it in tallow, and I'll start melting this next piece. Okay, now this is just a binder. The seasonings that we're gonna put on are gonna stick to that. All right, so this is just pepper and garlic. We don't have any salt in here. Why aren't we putting salt in the seasonings? Because we already put salt on the steak. That's right, we don't need to put any more on. So we didn't rinse it off or take it off. We're not putting any more on. So Leah's gonna hold that way up in the air and shake so she gets a good even coating of pepper and garlic. That looks great. Now let's do this one. There you go. There you go. Hold it over the steak, lean over a little bit. There you go, perfect, stop. All right, so let me turn these over and let's get another good coating on the other side on both. All right, now let's do the sides, keep shaking. So I'm just gonna keep turning this. There you go, great. Okay, so we've got two uh, steaks. We put salt on them, gave them a couple of hours to brine. Now we put some garlic and pepper on. Let's go out and get them on the grill and get them smoking. If you don't have a smoker to do a, a low smoke like this, it's okay. You're not gonna get the smoke taste. You can do this in the oven by setting your oven at 225 degrees. Make sure you use a thermometer to maintain the temperature, um, but you can do the slow part in the oven and then you can do the fast part in a cast iron pan like we're gonna do when we come back. So I'll see you outside. We're gonna be putting these on the smoker right now. Welcome back to the backyard. Uh, fans and subscribers have already met Luke. Those of you who are new, this is a large big green egg. It's the smallest of the smokers that we have here in the backyard. Luke is running at 225 degrees on Fogo Premium Charcoal. And then for a flavor wood, uh, actually using something different. This is from an Irish whiskey barrel uh, that uh, my wife actually bought me these from Diamond King Smokers for the holidays and loved it so much I bought more. Uh, it's a really interesting flavor wood as opposed to cherry uh, that I usually use with steak. So that's running in here. We're gonna put the two cap steaks on and we're gonna smoke them. If you don't have a smoker, it's perfectly fine. I'm gonna put these uh, temperature probes in as I'm talking to you so that I can uh, monitor this on my thermal work signals and know exactly when they get to temperature. If you wanna do this in an oven, do it in an oven, just use a th remote thermometer like I'm using. Uh, and when these get up to 115 degrees, we're gonna pull them. Now, we want them to serve them at 130, 135, but we're gonna pull them and let them rest at 115, and then we're gonna sear them. This time we're gonna do something different. We're gonna sear them in a cast iron skillet in the kitchen and uh, do a little bit of a different preparation of these. So let's close this down. It should take about an hour. I'm gonna monitor the signals on my app on my iPhone, and when these get up to 115 degrees, we're gonna pull them and rest them, and then we're gonna sear them. So we'll see you when it's time to pull them off. Okay, so as you can see from my app, ThermoWorks is telling me that the first steak looks like it should be ready. So I'm gonna check temperatures with my Thermopen, just because this is a rolled steak. I'm gonna make sure that I'm in the meat. Okay, this one's definitely ready to pull. Let's see about this one. Yeah, they're both about right. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull both of them. And I'm gonna wrap these in aluminum foil. Just to let them rest for about 10 minutes. And we're gonna go inside and get set up in the kitchen for a new kind of searing that I haven't showed you before. We'll see you inside. 
Welcome back to the kitchen. So Leah, we're gonna try something different. Usually when we do a reverse sear, we sear out on the grill on the grill grates, right? A lot of people say it's better to sear in a cast iron skillet. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna take these two cap steaks that have been resting for a few minutes. We're gonna sear them in this cast iron skillet. And as long as we're doing it, we're gonna put a little uh, butter together and some some spices and garlic and rosemary and thyme and see if we can make this taste wonderful. What do you think? Yeah. All right, so I've got my portable burner here. I'm gonna go ahead and light it up. Ooh. Yeah, I know, right? And I'm gonna put my glove on because this is gonna get really hot. So we want this to get up to about 500 degrees, right? That's what we do for the grill grates. So I'm gonna use my infrared thermometer. What do we got now? Got about... About 150 and change? Yeah, All right, so let's give it a couple minutes to warm up. And while it's coming up to temperature, we're gonna put a little bit of that Wagyu tallow in the pan as soon as it's up to temperature. Just create a little bit of grease on the bottom. Then we're gonna put these steaks in and uh, uh, and let the steak start to brown. And as they start, uh, once, once we're on the second side, I'm gonna go ahead and put some butter on top. We're gonna put the rosemary and thyme and garlic right into there. And uh, let's see how these steaks are gonna turn out. Okay, we're at 500 degrees. So let's go ahead and get some tallow into the pan. And while that is melting, I'm gonna go ahead and open up these steaks that we just took out of the smoker about 15 minutes ago. They look like they're already ready. They are, they came off at about 115 degrees. Looks like our tallow is ready. We are going to set, set off the uh, smoke detector if we don't open the back door and let the smoke out. <laughs> so we're gonna let those go for about a minute. So let's take about half of this butter and put it on one, about half and put it on the other one. It's going to melt right on top. Oops. And then let's take this garlic. I crushed up some garlic earlier. We're going to put that right up on here. All right. So now as I dump the butter and garlic down in here, I'm gonna throw some sprigs of rosemary and thyme, and we're gonna turn the steaks. Ooh, what do you think? Do we get in a Maillard reaction there, Leah? I'm already salivating. Can you guys see me through the smoke? <laughs> Covering your face up. If you can see this up close, it is looking delicious. Now I'm just gonna take some of this butter and put it right back onto the steak here. I think we've got a good sear on here. I'm gonna shut this off. Don't worry about the fire alarm. It's just the smoke from here. And we're gonna uh, let these rest and we'll cut them in just a minute. Okay, the smoke alarm has stopped. It's been about 10 minutes. These have been resting. And uh, I'm gonna put a little bit of finishing salt. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know that finishing salt is the bigger, kind of pyramid-shaped salt. And this is just a little bit for taste. Um, and then we're gonna cut this up and taste this in just a minute. So when we cut it, remember you always cut steak against the grain. Well, this is a rolled cap, so the grain is running up and down. So I'm actually gonna turn it on its side and slice it that way, because if I cut this way, I'm cutting with the grain, and that's not the way to get the juiciest steak. So, Leah, are you ready to taste? I'm ready. Okay. So I'm gonna slice this way. Make sure not to slice the butcher's twine. Well, it's okay if we cut the butcher's twine. Looks like we got a nice piece of medium rare meat here. Ooh, it's so juicy. It does, it is juicy. And tender and everything. Did you think we got the, what was it, the MTY, the moist 
tender. And yummy. Yeah, well this certainly looks pretty good. Let's cut a couple of pieces and give it a taste. Looks certainly moist and tender. Let's see the yummy. Let's see the, bring the yummy. That should be our slogan here. Take There's the, a piece for you. Take on the yummy. All right, cheers. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh God. That is the best steak I've ever had. Mm. So I'm gonna describe this to you. <laughs> Here you go, sweetheart. <laughs> if you've ever had prime rib, and you know the inside of the prime rib is the eye, it's a little tougher piece, and then the outside is that really good stuff, that's what this is, and the whole steak is just this oh. yummy goodness. You know, um, usually we save some of this for your mom and the crew, but I, I think we should just eat it all. What do you think? We're eating it all. We're eating it all. Sorry, crew. Look, I'm really sorry you guys can't taste this, but you can. You can buy it from Snake River Farms. Everything that I did today, you can do yourself, and uh, I'm confident that you can create a steak like this if you follow these directions. So, if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. We'll see you next week with another video, and, uh, uh, and we'll do that every week. We'll be giving you something new to taste. I'm sorry, I'm a little speeches from how good this is. You ready for another bite? I want 12 more million pieces. Okay, 12 million pieces coming up. So smash that subscribe button, hit the bell so you know when we've got a new video up. Try these recipes at home. Please comment, let me know how they go. If there's anything that you'd like for Leah and I to teach you how to cook, please put it in the comments and tell us. We make these videos for you and we want you to enjoy them. We'll see you next week on Eat, Eat More, More Vegans. Vegans.